Anyways, so here I am with Susan, the owner of Ellie Ann's, and Cleo Yoder, who does magic with your walls. So we have one more. Susan actually talked about this one uh, last week. Uh, are you talking the 80-20 rule? Uh, yeah, that's right. That she talked this about week. this one with the 80-20 rule, which I talked about back there. Anyway, so uh, she is going to go through this one again with Cleo because he's going to go through the steps of the process and if you can color match it because you know what? I need what color, everybody? Blue! <laughs> okay, so um, this is another fantastic piece. This is the... Um, Anamundi. 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 It's kind of hard to say. It is. Especially for a Scandinavian like me. But it is absolutely gorgeous. This is the one that I featured this week. And I had got some feedback that people were in love. So I will have Cleo take it over and explain how this process is done. Okay. Okay. Uh, Bring it a little closer so you can mm -hmm. maybe yeah. see the, uh, the, the texture and the, the shine uh, of it. Uh, we already mentioned the, uh, the product Anima Mundi. And uh, when I first heard it, I uh, did a double take just like uh, Susan did and thought, how do you pronounce that? Uh, this particular product is, uh, is um, made in Italy too. And uh, so uh, there's a prime coat goes on with a background background color to give it the uh, the base color, and then there's two coats of the product, and on the final coat, uh, while it is still partly dry, then uh, use a trowel to go different directions in order to give it the stress, in order to give it the reflection, in the different ways. This is very washable, very durable but it has a little bit of texture on it, so it's not going to wash off just like a piece of glass or a smooth uh, a paint, but it is uh, very cleanable, it's, it's durable, it's not gonna uh, have any problems with, uh, with water. So would you recommend this in a bathroom possibly? Is it more water resistant, the finish of it? Uh, yeah, it would uh, be very fine. The, the one problem with uh, these plasters, um, it, when you're talking about where to put them and the limitations of where to put them, the genuine limestone plaster, you do not want to put behind a stove where you're going to get <clears throat> hot grease splatters on it. Uh, other than that, all of these things can be put basically anywhere. There is a special wax that can be put on limestone behind stoves, and I've not put it on, but my instructions are that it smells very bad for about a, <laughs> for about a week, and after that, it's fine. But the process is, uh, is uh, something to go through, I guess. So um, I guess you don't invite guests till after a week to see the new plaster. <laughs> yeah. Take if, note. <laughs> but, well, they'll just think it's my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> but that's only if uh, that's only uh, right behind the stove whenever you use the special wax. It's not the plaster that smells bad. It's the special wax to uh, make the plaster uh, durable uh, behind the stove. Perfect. Well, it's nice to know where is proper applications um, to have this beautiful work and also the extra <clears throat> steps that may be needed in certain applications. Um, I wanted to set up a vignette with this one um, because I didn't want uh, the men out there to think that, well, this is only for the wife in the house or the significant other. This is definitely um, for the man as well. So I wanted to do a little vignette that was a little bit more manly. And so you'll see that I have a really awesome uh, vinyl planking going with this uh, beautiful gray. It reminds me of a uh, gray flannel, like uh, of a Model A or a Model T. It just makes me think of an old car. And the reason why I always go back to that is I remember back in the day when my grandparents refurbished their Model A and it was just so cool to see my grandmother. And at that time she had ovarian cancer to have accomplished that. And she was so proud and it was something that she felt 
productive in while she was battling her cancer. And I thought that was so amazing. And then I, and I will never forget it. The other thing that I put it with is I did give a little bit of sparkle, but it's not a sparkle in the way that is feminine. It's more like in a crystal. And I think that that can transform very easily into a unisexual type of um, design. It has the beautiful warm grays, um, and it's just going to t stand the test of time because the sparkle in there is in a bronze tone, a brownie bronze tone, which I think all men love their browns. That there's an up close look of that beautiful piece from Cambria. Um, remind me the name. Um, <laughs> I forgot oh, Galloway? the name. Galloway, Galloway from um, from Cambria. Then I put a mosaic tile with it that has some of your slate and glass, and slate just gives it that rustic feel. Glass gives some reflections, so it can really make give a lot of depth to your walls and make them recede and um, and do wonderful work in especially a small spot, a small space. And then I have a really patterned carpet that could be used uh, stretched in broad loom or it could be made into an airy rug it has kind of an art deco feel it's very geometric and i think it would look fabulous in a guy's den and then we just have a stainless steel really heavy hammered um piece of uh hardware here that i think would uh just when a man grabs it he's gonna be like yep i got some hardware there so again these are lovely finishes. I think you're going to enjoy them. And I'm so happy that Cleo is here to be able to showcase this. And um, we will, I think we have one more vignette left to go through and um, see, learn more about the different plaster that Cleo can do for you.